Dear Michael S. Dell, my name is John David and I was hired as the top hairdresser and colorist at the Boca Raton Resort. I was hired in October of 2021 and I worked in the salon from the reopening uh, December 14th, 221 to May 25th, 2022. My experience uh, doing hair on the guests and members and returning customers as well as new customers of the salon was a great experience and those clients were very happy with me and I was happy with them. My problem that I will tell you in detail in another link is the fact that I was hired on a commission basis and there was no way possible to make my promised living wage commission because as you know, or you should know, the Boca Tron re reopened and it opened with a new phone server that required fiber optics. You see, the technical transition manager did not do their job fully, and it takes about a year to retrofit five hotels, restaurants, golf courses, tennis clubs, salons, spas, as well as inter-office lines with fiber optics. Of course, that was a huge problem for the Boca Raton property, the hotels, the hospital hospitality departments and the restaurants, as well as the salon and spa underperformed. Members who were then paying like fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a year for membership plus monthly dues had to endure calling through a maze of operators, dropped calls, busy signals, and rerouting just to make a restaurant reservation or a hair appointment. At the Boca Raton, only a small and then a larger percentage as time went by of members and guests and potential members, guests, as well as returning clients, salon clients, made it through to book their rooms or services, at least when I worked there. So it, they couldn't even get through. Again, in my next video, I'll give you a detailed description of the lies and deception my salon and spa managers fed me when I tried to quit about that problem more than three times and the upper management's decision that killed me. But in this video, I will acknowledge that I know that it was Daniel A. Hostetler, CHA president and chief executive officer of the Boca Raton and a personal hair client of mine who gave the order to not tell employees, members, guests, and returning customers about the downed phone server in his meetings and his emails that stated to do so would lower the morale of the employees. And his solution to the problem was to hire more operators to handle the calls, something that did not put a dent in the problem for the salon and spa not being able to book clients. What that mandate did to me, sir, personally, was to have my managers give me carrot after carrot to continue working at the Boca Raton over their lives while I implored them that I knew something was wrong. You see, I should have been pulling in 100K just by the sheer percentage of hotel guests booked at the hotels. You see, I was a salon and spa consultant in the 90s and the small percentage of clients that booked did not match any national average of what was going on at the Boca Raton. Again, because human operators were doing the job only a working phone server could do. But in March of 2022, when I did find out about the whole entire problem, I sent an email to my managers, which had a whistleblower tone, but I never threatened whistleblowing actions. I knew that when the phone lines were fixed, I would indeed be working at my dream job. This was my retirement job and I'd have company health insurance instead of my own. I would have the job I moved uh, from Chicago to Florida for. I would have the job, the apartment I took across the street for. In that meeting, one of my managers, I had that meeting after that email, and my manager wept the entire time because her feelings were hurt because I didn't come to her in person. But I was the one who was wronged and she was crying. And I had come to her many times and pointed out that, uh, that I addressed that problem. And she just lied about what the problem was. So in that meeting, I also offered real solutions to the phone problems for the phone. 
solutions my managers did not want to hear because upper management solutions were to ask uh, uh, to ask potential customers, salon customers, to email the salon for reservations and an app was being built for the salon. I will tell you that was the most ludicrous solution or solutions I have ever heard. But I was still in. I moved to Boca Raton for this job. I had the apartment for this job. I had already lost my own health insurance and I had gone into debt working for the salon that my manager said would be so busy. And I believed them until I went to quit again and again and again and carrot, carrot, carrot. Anyway, the last lie came when I told my managers that I had been offered a summer job in North Carolina where many of the Boca Raton members were summering. That wasn't the lie. I told my managers I would take that job all summer and continue to build my clientele for Florida and then come back in the fall when the phone lines are fixed. And my manager said, yay, that would also be advantageous to them especially after they had done what they had done to me. That's what I think. So anyway, I left my new apartment with my new furniture um, vacant for six months, and I continued to build my uh, Boca Raton clientele in North Carolina. And I accomplished that at that resort. I was busy 40 hours a week, and it turns out their phone lines worked. At the Boca Raton salon, I stood around for hours and hours doing nothing because, as we know, it's to me, People couldn't even book appointments with me. Anyway, I built more of a clientele in Florida, uh, I mean, in North Carolina than I did in Florida. So let me just state here, no hairdresser would knowingly take a job at a salon where the phones did not work and where potential customers were asked to email the salon for an appointment. Now, when I came back to Florida after my stint in North Carolina, and it was November 15, 2022. I reapplied per policy to the Boca Raton and I emailed my managers. I said, hello, I'm back. But guess what? My manager ghosted me and the Boca Raton HR gave me a pat rejection later. And here is where the lie was. I was promised my job back and the Boca Raton even called me three times throughout that summer to ensure that I was coming back. Phone records will show that I would have no doubt in my mind that I had done the right thing for my 100K year job and my last career, and I was going to get the return on my year-long investment at the Boca Raton Salon. I knew I was coming back because they called and ensured that I was coming back. I will stop here, Mr. Dell, and I'll ask you to do something for me. Um, but first, I want to tell you that I'm not threatening you, and I promise right here that I will not divulge to anyone um, publicly nor anyone I know that I have reached out to you about this request. If a future litigation or lawsuit with the Boca Raton, um, of course, that's what I'm getting at, um, moves forward, I will never mention that I reached out to you ever. In fact, you don't even have to acknowledge this request. And this is a really risky move on my part. You see, I want you to just rubber stamp a meeting between Daniel Hostetler and a lawyer hired by the Boca Raton LLC and me. The only way possible that this correspondence would be made public is if the 221 or 222 emails meetings notes or minutes internal or external about the phone servers of the Boca Raton were ever to be deleted or destroyed, as well as the official exit document that I had with the Boca Raton HR. All digital calendars between me and the managers of the salon and spa would also would have to be not have been altered or deleted. And you, sir, have the power to make that happen. And I, sir, will know if that has happened. Look, I've had sleepless nights and stress regarding even thinking about litigation, fraudulent inducement, fraud, and damages, etc. I'm not the kind of person who would do this crap. And doing so is sort of a David versus Goliath thing, and there is no way for me to know I could win. And I'm here to tell you I've already lost a year of my life, a move, my health, my health insurance, and I'm stuck working in North Carolina and Chicago with no way to get out of Florida. I mean, I'm going to win but there's no winning. 
And then I thought, why not just reach out to you? You can rubber stamp a meeting with Daniel Hostetler and the Boca Raton LLC lawyer and me, and I can give them my whole spiel. In that meeting, I just hope that I can convince them that not only do I have a viable big lawsuit against the Boca Raton LLC, but I can prove damages and the bigger cost of doing this all in the public forum would be bad. I've been famous before, sir, and I've been notorious, sir. I prefer to be the touchy-feely spiritual hairdresser slash writer that I am. Thank you very much. So I'm going to go ahead and contact Daniel myself, and I will set up that meeting with him and a lawyer myself. I hope on your end you do the same thing and help me along. I will not record the meeting, but they can. In that meeting, I will hand them a 36-page document containing every detail of what I feel is a legitimate claim. It puts my balls on the table, but my hope is that you will listen in on said meeting, whatever, proverbially, or with other members and associates, make them aware. In that meeting, you can determine for yourself whether to just write me a check and help me get out of Florida and do the right thing by your part. This would be the most human thing to do and easiest for me and you. Or you can just decide to let me see the Boca Raton LLC, and I will do that. I, I don't want to. All I want to do in that meeting is get your lawyers to recognize the fact that I do indeed have a case which would will give you and the powers that be a clear heads up on what you will offer me, if anything. I have a number in my head as to what the Boca Raton owes me, and it is not three times the amount of fraud and damages, which is what the state of Florida allows. It is lower than that, sir. But I will say, even though I thought that number that I came up with was, well, crazy at first, but then I ran the numbers and looked at what was done and what I lost. And when I began to look at it again and again, how the Boca Raton and the decisions that the managers made, how they not only impacted my life and ruined my Florida career, well, I just don't think that my crazy number is so crazy after all. <sighs> so if you click the next link, and you don't have to, I'll tell you in more detail about what the managers did to me, as well as a little bit more about myself. So I guess that's telling you I'm a credible person or something, or maybe it, maybe I'm just being stupid. So anyway, onward. Thank you, Mr. Dell. want to call it i'm moving out of chicago and i i whatever you got me or you don't they go no 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 so then i looked around and florida was perfect i found the perfect job at the boca raton resort i did my homework i knew this was the biggest coolest thing that was happening i knew the buzz around it i knew the social media around it and i knew i could make a killing so i decided to move here i had friends here and I knew I was going to get that job. There was one hair salon job, or I didn't know they were only going to hire one hairdresser, but they hired me because my resume was great. And I'm a great hairdresser, a great colorist. And you can ask the managers or perform there and you can talk to the, um, the clients I did. They love, they love me and I love them. Um, so I moved to Boca Raton, um, and got the job. But then the salon didn't open at first. So I'll just go through the salon stuff. I worked in a shitty, awful, one-room, makeshift salon suite in one of the facial rooms that was remodeled. And there was just a mirror propped up. And the members had to come in, and there was tepid water. They they were It was horrible. And um, I made nice, and they loved me, and I kept on coming back whenever they could make an appointment. Again, the phone lines were down and I didn't see them often and I didn't put it together till much later and um I I, and I was so slow and I was doing Michael uh, Daniel Hostetler's hair and I even brought it up to him I said why are we so slow here and I brought it up to my manager several times and they kept on putting me off and putting me off and he goes no no you're you're great you're, you're going to build a clientele making me me think oh I'm supposed to build a clientele and I'm so good that they'll just word of mouth it. But honest to God, by, by statistics, and I, I've been a consultant be, before, 
the amount of people that were booked in the hotels, the percentage of people that were booked for blow dryers and blow dryers in color, I should have been busy right off the bat, not to mention returning members and clients. It, it was just uncanny to me. And every time I would bring it up to the managers in January, February, March, and April, the managers said, oh, when the salon gets built. So when the salon got built, I moved, moved in there and I've got, we've got four chairs and Nancy, the other hairdresser, she's already booked. Her clients book as they're leaving so they don't call in and have to worry about the phones. But the clients that were potentially my clients had to call in and again, the maze of dropped calls and so forth. And I, I didn't know this was happening and the clients weren't telling me, including the hotel, um, guests that made appointments. They would actually walk to the salon to make the appointment for me and that's how they got the appointment. Now, I will tell you another thing about what was going on at this salon, at this salon, and it could be a big problem for you going down the line, is I had so many clients that were no-shows. Now, when they're no-shows in less than 24 hours, the hairdresser is paid the full commission, and that person is charged the full charge if they don't cancel within 24 hours. Well, the reason why many of those members and guests couldn't cancel was because they couldn't get through. They may have gone through the maze to book the appointment, but they couldn't get through to cancel the appointment, which is crazy. You would never want that to get out in public. And I will guarantee you, I will make sure that goes out in public if I ever do so, because it's just leverage and it's awful and it's horrible. And if I were business, I would never want that out either. But that's what happened. And I brought this up to the manager, Tatiana. I said, this is crazy. I don't understand people who would not show. She goes, well, this is what rich people do. They don't care about their money as much. She said that to me, but she also said it to the spa members in meetings more than once. So it's a really shitty thing to say. I hope her head does not roll or you reprimand her or you, anything goes down, down the line for her. Just a subtle something. Don't say that would be just fine. Don't fire her over that. And by the way, if this thing ever goes to litigation or anything, I will demand that they are not touched. These women, as much as um, they lied to me and strung me with carrots, one of the carrots was uh, when I went to quit, they said, oh, now we're booking uh, groups of people and you're going to get tons of business. You'll be busy. And I'm going, really? Because I, I don't think so. And I stayed and I, was, I wasn't busy. I was anything less busy. And this was in March. And, um, anyway, I would not want them hurt. And, um, that's, that's not said. Working with those managers wasn't horrible, but every time I did bring up the, the, the problem, they would say, oh, we're hiring more operators. That was another carrot that I, I didn't put two and two together. Why would you hire more operators? Cause I, we had a call center in the salon and we had receptionists that sitting in front desk that booked clients. And they were never busy. Like, it wasn't like they were ring, ring, ring. But I didn't know she was talking about more operators in the general, the general properties. I didn't know why they needed that. Again, because there's a phone server, right? No, there wasn't a phone server. They were just scrambling to keep me there because the clients loved me and I love the clients. And I was a good team player and they played me. Now, when I did find out, and I won't tell you how or why in this video, but I found out about the phone servers, and I have an inside person on the ground now still um, that remains that they want to stay anonymous, and I'm going to honor that, just like I'm going to keep you anonymous for uh, me reaching out to you. But I found out all about the phone server and what was going on, and it was a problem and HR even told me, and I was just like, oh, my God. So I left that day there because a client had walked in. She par double parked her car, couldn't cancel the, the appointment because she didn't get through on the phone, walked into the salon. She goes, I can't make my appointment today. I just want you to know I just couldn't get through on the phone lines. I go, what do you mean? She goes, I can never get through on the phone lines. I have to walk to the salon to book an appointment. Now, this is a gold member, mind you. And I'm going, what? what the it, it, it was crazy. So then I go to HR and I, and I asked them point blank about the problem. And this is after calling my friend who I know on the ground floor at the Boca Resort. Resort. And so I kind of pointed out the, the phone thing and she divulged everything. And then I went home, did the whistleblower letter, which isn't really whistleblower letter because I didn't threaten anything. 
And I got this meeting with Tatiana and Vanessa the next day. And that in that meeting, I had to just witness Vanessa crying the whole time and pointing out to her that, look, I'm the one who's wrong here. I should be crying. And I'm not suing you. I'm not doing anything. I want to make this work. I have some solutions. But it, please stop crying. And Tatiana is just like, whatever. And we kept on going back and forth. Oh, well, you should have called me or she told me you should have this instead of that. I go, no, I had to do this because you could fire me if, if I brought this up and it was, you know, I would just be gone. I don't want to be gone. This is my dream job. I've already put money into it and I lost money working there. I lost my health insurance. I was all in still the day before I had accepted a job and offer to work in North Carolina at the West Coast Resort and Spa by one of the gold members. And that gold member said, well, I know you're not happy, but I, I, I think you can build up a clientele in Florida there. And I did. I built up a clientele there. But I only left the Boca Raton Resort uh, officially in the end of May because I was promised my job back and because I was all in. I knew this was a hundred K a year job. I knew I was faster than Nancy and better than Nancy, frankly, at hair and color. And they even hired Joe and I'm 10 times better than her as well. And I really fit the, the clientele at the book resort. So when I came back after three calls that summer of the Boca Raton resort calling me, they called and said, you're coming back because the clients are asking, when is, when are you coming back? And I told them three times throughout the summer. Phone records will show that. And um, when I came back, I didn't get the job back. I reapplied for policy, and um, I was ghosted by Vanessa and Tatiana, two women who said, we're like a family. And that really, really hurt. And if I had thought about suing the Boca Raton or... Um, angry or whatever in June, July, August, I, I, I couldn't have done it. I was just so tired and I was so hurt. I, and I was a little depressed. I couldn't get out of bed. It was pretty horrible. I couldn't afford a shrink, which I would have done. And, um, it was just, it was just terrible, Mr. Bell. I'm telling you, terrible. But I came back refreshed and I, I was angry. Yes. And I don't want to be angry. I just want this settled. I want, I, I want to be paid for that career that I lost. And that's what I'm going for here. That's why I'm telling you this story and why and who I am. I'm telling you that I was wrong and it was bad. And I'm not going to cry or anything. But I'm not close. I mean, that'd be good, right, for the camera. But, um, and I, I, many times I, I asked myself why I stayed. And there was just so many things I was all in. I'm 60 years old. And this was the perfect next thing for me to do before I retired. It was the perfect job for me. It was the perfect place. I loved working there. I loved the Boca Resort. And I still do. I've been there several times with friends who are, are members and so forth. And um, I, I love it. It's just a great place. And it's, a, it's Disneyland. And so many people, young people and old people, they have so many good memories there. And um, I was really proud to work there and I was really happy. And because of the decisions that the upper management made to lie to someone like me, someone normally, someone younger would just walk away and not go for a lawsuit or go for fraudulent damages or fraudulent litigation, or whatever. So I tell you that story because this, potential lawsuit or this potential anything it is is just wrong to me and I really am going to pursue it to as far as I am able to and I, I want you to know that it, and I want you to know that it, it was wrong that was done to me and I deserve to have be paid for the career that, that the Boca Raton Resort took from me and that's all and that's, I just want you to know that, 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 that's what's going to happen. So I thank you for your time. I know I just gave you way too much, but, you know, if any of this leaks out, meaning the video that I gave you, uh, it won't be from my part. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you help me along from your side to right the wrongs, thank you. 
I may never know that you were the one who righted the wrongs. And um, and I am reading your book. It's really good. I did read it to find out what kind of person you are. And whatever, you're cool. Um, and that's it. So I wish you love and light. And um, I hope you tell your wife about this because she will just go nuts because she would empathize with her hairdresser if this ever happened to him. And maybe that might <laughs> help a good decision on my part. So I thank you again, Michael Estelle. This is John David, over and out.